One month, 63 matches and 163 goals later, the biggest match in sport is upon us. Modern-day gladiators from around the world have battled it out on the grandest stage of them all, until only two of the best have remained. They have battled against all odds and surpassed great adversity to get a shot at the most coveted prize in sports history. In a short while from now, the world's best will put on their boots and pull up their socks one last time in the 2018 FIFA World Cup, hoping to etch their names in the history books forever. Will it be the Blues who will lift the World Cup or will it be the fiery ones? We just have to wait for a few more hours to find out. But the heart says the underdog Croatia, the mind says the favourite France. Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV's coverage of the FIFA World Cup. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. With me in the studio, Jyoti Ann Barrett, former Indian national player, Nilanjan Datta, media officer of the Indian national team, and Jay Lokpalli, of course, senior sports journalist. He is also the deputy sports editor of The Hindu. Thank you to the three of you for joining me. Jyoti, few more hours. Few more hours, uh, but it's a very, um, it's a crucial time for the teams right now. And and as viewers, we are all all on tenter hooks to see who's going to win this game. Elanjan, France start as overwhelming, overwhelming favourites, but there's no reason to believe that Croatia has lost it as yet. 90 minutes of life and death. The last big match which France played was the Euro 2016 final. A similar situation in France, the national stadium of France, Portugal had won. Jay Lokpal, your thoughts on the final? Having watched that video of the Croatian Prime Minister, I think uh, I would like to back Croatia. Although everyone knows that France is a much superior squad, with much more technical, uh, 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 it's proven tactical uh, uh, strength. But uh, Croatia would be the team to watch. Football is for everyone. That's the theme for today and that's what we are going to discuss over the next few minutes or so and try and bring in a lot of elements. You know, there are some kids in our studio who will who'll speak to us about the France versus Croatia final. There are some uh, female players as well who will speak to us about that. We also have an audience in our studio and we'll see which way the audience is really rooting for in this particular match. But talking about Croatia and Elanjan, Interestingly, Vijay Lokpali brought up the Prime Minister of Croatia. Interestingly, they do not have a full-fledged embassy here in India. They, in fact, run out of a small makeshift apartment. And the, the greatness of football and the greatness of the game bringing people together, both the ambassadors of Croatia and France have decided to watch the match in the, Cro in the French embassy today. And so, football, you know, breaks all barriers, breaks all boundaries, and it is indeed truly for all. Absolutely. In fact, not only football, sports in general, rather. And you know what football reflects, I believe, the sport which reflects the sociological aspects of any country to the maximum limit or effect is uh, always football. The sociological effects are, um, aspects are always highlighted by the sport of football. A very small nation, Croatia, there have been talks that they have been with the 4.1 or 4.2 million people in the World Cup final, but the sporting culture out there. It's not just about the sizable population of 1.3 billion people out there, 4.2 there. Each and every one plays sports. It's much like Australia, much like the European nations. A kid two, three years is forced into sports. So that's the sporting culture of the country. A huge day for Croatian football. 1998, they lost it in the um, uh, semi-final. The, the first great... World Cup they ever played and Absolutely. they almost made it all the way through. Nowadays, every we wake up to WhatsApp messages. Uh, today we got a message every 20 years as a new world champion. You never know. <laughs> Are you rooting for a new world champion, the underdog, Jyoti? Always, always, uh, always the underdog for me. You know, I always see, like seeing new new countries coming up and new players uh, becoming sort of the big names in football. So they will be huge and. Um, I'd love to see, you know, that to, to see Croatia get new fans today and, and see a huge surge in uh, football interest in Croatia due to their team. You know, Vijay Lokpalli, as far as today's match is concerned, we've spoken enough about Croatia. Let's talk about the French side as well. Any parallels that can be drawn to this French side with the 1998 World Cup winning side? Uh, that was a very different team, a very different squad. And here, of course, I mean, if you see the, most of the... Um, they are immigrants, the majority who have excelled 
and again like nilanjan said it, it reflects on the sociological aspect of society even in france also football is seen as a route to to carve a good life for yourself i mean they, it it takes you it brings you uh, glamour it brings you money fame and essentially it gives you security of good life so france has a, a football tradition uh, croatia has been pursuing a dream but french have lived this dream so maybe they would like to repeat it tonight but uh, like we said nilanjan said it will be great for world football to have a new champion indeed it will be great for world football for us to have a new champion let's now go across to tina anja who's standing by with a few kids to talk about this match and also football in general over to you tina Thank you Frank and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV's very own football stadium. Football is for everyone, young and old, rich and the poor and of course we are being joined today by a group of young children, enthusiastic footballers, most of them residing in slums from the Vikaspur area of Delhi. For these slum children, football is not just a game. It is a way of reforming their lives. Every day these children wake up before sunrise and go for practice for football with their coach Sylvester Peter. A very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha TV Sylvester. Hello, you know sir. over the years you've been churning out a quiet revolution in the slums of Vikaspuri. Where did the journey begin? Take us through your journey. Yeah, it's hello everybody. Uh yeah, it's a beautiful journey because the journey started long back. Um uh, our academy name is called My Angels Academy and uh I started the journey when I was just 13 years old under a pomegranate tree. So now if I calculate the years it's almost 3 decades now. And who are angels? Angels are 90% they were beggars today none. 30% were dra drug addict today none. They were fundamentalist thief. And there was a boy who wanted to become a terrorist. Today he will give his life to save somebody's life. Uh, there was That's why they <laughs> say that you know the passion for football is what makes the game the biggest sporting celebration in the world isn't it Yeah 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 very true very true like uh, because you know how can you teach defeat in life you know and uh, when somebody's uh, you know uh, the children are very uh, they are very intelligent basically you know when you speak the truth they relate to you so for example if somebody is saying every uh, children are equal they know that they are not equal but when you say on the field everywhere you are, you the most expensive shoe can't you know guarantee you a good game it's the practice and everybody rich or poor whosoever from whichever background on the field everybody are equal you know so let's also so, speak to some of these young football uh, players you know uh, what's your name and how did your football journey begin uh, my name is pooja and i'm just 6 year old then i will join my angels academy aap kab se khel rahe hain football jab main 6 saal ki thi tab maine football ko join kiya tha aur uh, मतलब ये बहुत ही मेरे लिए बहुत ही चेंज लाने वाली मेरी लाइफ का पॉइंट था लाइक भैया फुटबॉल सिखा रहे थे बच्चों को तो मैं मोस्टली स्कूल से आती थी हम लोगों के पेरेंट्स में कुछ सपोर्टिंग नहीं था तो हम लोग स्कूल से आते थे सिर्फ बैग को रखते थे और पार्क चले जाते थे तो एक दिन मेरे साथ ऐसा हुआ कि मैंने भैया को प्रैक्टिस करवाते हुए फुटबॉल के साथ देखा तो मुझे लगा कि क्योंकि जो बच्चे खेल रहे थे वो स्लम किड्स थे तो मुझे मुझे लगा कि तो मेरे आसपास के ही लोग हैं तो मैं भैया के पास गई तो मैंने कहा भैया मैं भी फुटबॉल खेलना चाहती हूँ तो उन्होंने कहा हाँ क्यों नहीं भाई नॉट कल से आप भी आना फिर कल से क्यों आप अभी से खेलो मैंने कहा ठीक है ठीक है तो मैं मैंने इस थ्रू मैंने माइंड अकेडमी को ज्वाइन करा और इस थ्रू मेरा फुटबॉल जर्नी स्टार्ट हुआ तो आपकी फैमिली का कैसा सपोर्ट रहा क्योंकि फुटबॉल एक ऐसा गेम है जिसमें हमारे देश में कम से कम अभी भी लड़कियों के लिए उतनी ज़्यादा वेलकमिंग नेचर नहीं है फुटबॉल मतलब फुटबॉल मेरे घर में तो बिल्कुल सपोर्ट नहीं था इट्स मीन मतलब मैं रोज़ फुटबॉल खेलती थी और रोज़ मार खाती थी मेरा जर्नी ये था मैं रोज़ फुटबॉल खेलती थी और रोज़ मार खाती थी और और आज आप आप जाके वो चीज़ें ख़त्म हुई क्योंकि हम फाइव सिस्टर एंड वन ब्रदर हैं तो भी सबकी मैरिज हो गई तो सिर्फ मैं बच गई हूँ तो भी मैं इतना स्ट्रॉन्ग हो चुकी हूँ कि वो लोग मुझ पर मतलब वो मुझ पे हाथ नहीं डाल तो अब इतने सालों बाद कैसा है आपके पेरेंट्स का रिएक्शन फैमिली का सपोर्ट फाइनली मिला है आपके और फुटबॉल के लव के आप पूरा सपोर्ट है क्योंकि मेरे फैमिली में कोई भी ऐसा नहीं लाइक मैं आज भरतनाट्यम डांसर हूँ एंड डिज़ाइन करती हूँ ड्रेस की खुद का ड्रेस डिज़ाइन करती हूँ और माइंड जस्ट अकेडमी में कोच हूँ ओके आई एन से भी बात करते हैं आपका क्या नाम है मुस्कान और आपने 
कैसे फुटबॉल के लिए फुटबॉल ज्वाइन किया फुटबॉल की तरफ कैसे आप आकर कैसे शुरू किया आपने फुटबॉल खेलना I guess she's a little nervous. In fact, you know, Sylvester, before the show started, was telling us this little girl is the one, you know, who's went on to score hat-trick goals, and she's also, uh, you know, uh, played at the national level. So maybe, you know, by the end of the show, she's able to talk to us. We'll talk to somebody else. What's her name? Farzana. Farzana, आप फुटबॉल आपने कब से शुरू किया खेलना? आपका गेम के प्रति इतना इंटरेस्ट कैसे जागा? मैं बहुत छोटी थी तब जिसे मैंने ज्वाइन किया था. पहले तो जब मैं एकेडमी में नहीं थी तो मुझे फुटबॉल की भी सीडी भी नहीं पता थी मुझे ये भी नहीं पता था कि फुटबॉल नाम की भी कोई चीज़ तो फिर फुटबॉल कैसे ज्वाइन किया भाई भाई आप ट्रेनिंग करवा रहे थे तो फिर एंजल्स में ज्वाइन किया अब आप किस किस लेवल पे खेल चुके अभी मैं नेशनल लेवल पर खेल चुकी हूँ वाह दैट्स लवली और क्या क्या टूर्नामेंट्स आपने अभी तक किए हैं अभी हमने बस अभी हम फ्रांस गए थे हम तो बताइए फ्रांस के एक्सपीरियंस के बारे में कैसा रहा आपका फ्रांस जर्नी फ्रांस नहीं कहाँ गए थे हम लोग बैंगलोर गए थे गोवा भी गए थे हम लोग ने वहाँ पे मैच खेला हमने उन्हीं के टीम उन्हीं के ग्राउंड में उन्हीं को हराया था मे बी लेट्स ऑल्सो ब्रिंग इन द बॉयज नाउ तो आप क्या नाम है माई नाम चांद चांद नाम चांद नाम है आपका और आपकी वजह से कैसे मुलाकात हुई कैसे फुटबॉल खेलना शुरू किया आप मैंने ना भैया को जब छोटा था तो खेलते ये सिखा रहे थे कितने सालों से खेल रहे हैं आप आठ साल आठ सालों से खेल रहे हैं आपका फेवरेट प्लेयर कौन है रोनाल्डो रोनाल्डो अनफॉर्चुनेटली वो फाइनल आज नहीं खेल रहे हैं मेरा नाम शकील है एंड uh, मैं एक्चुअली मैं इंटरेस्ट ज्वाइन नहीं हुआ था मुझे जबरदस्ती कराया गया था मेरे मम्मी के थ्रू एंड थोड़ी जैसे फैमिली का सपोर्ट सुनने को मिल रहा है कि नहीं है तो मैं कुछ टाइम तक रहा था और मेरे पूरे मतलब कज़न ब्रदर सिस्टर्स वगैरह थे फिर उसके बाद कुछ टाइम बाद वो सारे निकल गए फिर मैं भी निकल गया फिर मैं खुद आया और एंजल्स ज्वाइन किया था क्योंकि आ, मेरे फादर और मेरे आ, फादर का थॉट था कि ये कुछ भी काम हाथ का सीख लें तो स्ट्रेचिंग का काम के लिए मुझे लगा दिया गया फाइनली मैं रियलाइज़ कर रहा था मैं जो भी हूँ मैं बच्चा हूँ मैं आ, गेम खेल रहा था वहाँ पढ़ाई कर रहा था ये सारी एक्टिविटीज़ हो रही थी अभी मैं बैठे बैठे क्या कर रहा हूँ तो आपका रूटीन क्या रहता है फुटबॉल के लिए मॉर्निंग मैम थ्री थर्टी ए एम हम लोग उठते हैं फोर फोर ओ क्लॉक तक रिपोर्टिंग टाइम होता है ग्राउंड में एंड उसके बाद फोर टू सिक्स थर्टी तक हमारा फुटबॉल होता है सिक्स थर्टी टू सेवन ओ क्लॉक तक फिर आपके कोच बता रहे थे कि कोई ग्राउंड नहीं है तो फिर आप प्रैक्टिस कहाँ देते हैं मैम मॉर्निंग थ्री थर्टी ए एम इसलिए उठते हैं हम लोग कहाँ प्रैक्टिस करते डी डी ग्राउंड मैम सो और उस ग्राउंड में जैसे हम लोग जाते हैं पहले तो पहले हम लोग क्लीन करते हैं क्योंकि वहाँ पर काफ़ी नाइट में जो बेकार लोग जैसे ड्रिंक हो गया ये सारी चीज़ें वहाँ अल्कोहल चलती रहती है तो पहले हम लोग जाते हैं कांच के टुकड़े कभी किले कुछ ना पत्थर वगैरह वो सारा क्लीन करने के बाद फिर हम लोग को गेम खेलने के लिए पूरा क्लीन होता है ग्राउंड हाई माई नेम इज इमानवल एंड आई एम इस नेफ्यू कम वॉल्टियर फॉर माई माई एंजल्स अकेडमी Yeah, I am a part of football team as a coach, not as a player. Right okay, now. okay. So, so, when did your journey begin? Have you been with Sylvester since the beginning? Yeah, very beginning. I was with Mama only, but uh, as I have done my engineering, you know, so I was working with the engineering firm and all. But like, whenever I get time, I come to Angels Academy, spend my time. I get my energy from my Angels Academy, guide them through studies, through sports, because I was also playing football. So, this is the best place where I can learn something. So I am always with them. Whenever I get time, I'm I'm being with them. Wonderful. आप क्या नाम है? मेरा नाम आनंद है. और आप भी football team का part हैं? हाँ मैं भी football. कितने सालों से खेल रहे हो? मैं करीब नौ आठ साल से खेल रहा हूँ. आपकी family support करती है आपके football खेलने के लिए? हाँ support करती है मेरे मेरी मम्मी भी support करती है और भाई भी support करते हैं. शुरू से ही करते हैं? हाँ. और बताइए football के लिए interest कैसे जागा आप? मैं दो. India में ज़्यादातर बच्चे cricketers बनना चाहते हैं footballers नहीं. Uh, मैं 2007 में जब बिहार में बाढ़ आई थी तो मैं वहाँ से आया था यहाँ तो फिर यहाँ मैं रुका मतलब यहाँ इस्लम में ये इंदिरा कैंप नंबर चार इस्लम है वहाँ रुका हुआ था तो वहाँ पर भैया वो एकेडमी चलाते थे माई एंजल्स एकेडमी तो वहाँ पर ये पहले मेरा बड़ा भाई गया था खेलने है ना तो फिर मैं उनको एक दिन ढूँढते ढूँढते वहाँ ग्राउंड पहुँच गया था तो फिर वहाँ देखा मैं कि भैया फुटबॉल खिला रहे हैं 
तो फिर मैं मैं ये जो आपके कोच बता रहे थे कि आप फ्रांस होकर आए हैं तो आपका फ्रांस का एक्सपीरियंस कैसा रहा उसके बारे में फ्रांस का एक्सपीरियंस तो बहुत अच्छा था यहाँ अम्बेडकर स्टेडियम में एक टूर्नामेंट हुआ था माय चांस का तो वहाँ पर वो फ्रेंच कोच थे ये एफ सी के कोच उन्होंने मेरा गेम देखा था और मतलब बहुत बंदे आए थे उधर हज़ारों के करीब आए थे तो उसमें से गेम देखा मेरा फिर उन्हें अच्छा लगा तो उन्होंने सेलेक्ट किया मुझे फिर हम फ्रांस गए थे तो मेरा पासपोर्ट बनाने में बहुत दिक्कत आई थी और मतलब भैया ने तो बहुत स्ट्रगल किया था मेरा पासपोर्ट बनाने में क्योंकि आप स्ट्रगल की बात कर रहे हैं सो लेट मी ऑल्सो लेट मी कम बैक टू सिल्वेस्टर यू नो ही इज़ पेड अ वेरी हैवी प्राइज बोथ इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू नो फैमिली एंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रोफेशनल लाइफ सो लेट डिस्कस how how it's been uh, the journey for silvester but his love for football has kept him going so silvester tell us you know what are the sacrifices that you had to make because of football you see uh, the sacrifice word is something uh, i won't use it because uh, every time uh, you know uh, at the time of my divorce also i was smiling so <laughs> so that's the passion for football so that is uh, so you know when you are doing something you know okay the challenges come but i never uh, I don't know what uh, it's it's kept on going it's I just moved so there uh, there's a problem comes then I'll sit and think analyze how to overcome the hurdle that's it from now you know like uh, another name of Sylvester was crazy even psychiatrist card visited my home and uh, now I tease my mother that you know aapka pagal bachcha famous ho gaya certainly football has made you famous and of course the way you've been transforming their lives aap bataiye aapne sir ki academy kab join ki thi माई नेम इज़ तंजीर जब मैं सेवन एट ईयर्स था तभी मैंने ज्वाइन करता था और मैं परी मतलब मैं एक टाइम में मैं कबाड़ी चुनता था उस टाइम मतलब डस्टबिन से मुझे उठा के सिलिस्टर भैया ने मुझे फुटबॉल प्लेयर बनाया मुझे बॉल के बारे में कुछ भी पता नहीं था बट आज मैं एक एट इवेंट सीनियर क्लब में मैं रॉयल एंजल्स फुटबॉल क्लब में भी खेल रहा हूँ और एंजल्स में कोच हूँ ऑल दो आप बहुत लोगों के लिए इंस्पिरेशन है लेकिन आपका इंस्पिरेशन कौन है आपका फुटबॉल प्लेयर बेस्ट प्लेयर कौन है अभी तक तो सिलवेस्टर भी यही है आ, क्योंकि ये आज नहीं होता तो मैं खुद फुटबॉल प्लेयर नहीं बन सकता अभी वैसे सेकंड मेरा फुटबॉल प्लेयर है जो बेस्ट है और क्रिस्टन रोनाल्डो बस सॉरी वर्ल्ड कप नहीं खेल पा रहा आज की दो दोनों टीम्स खेल रही हैं फाइनल उनमें से आप किसको फॉलो अभी तो मैं मेरा पूरा चांस है कि इस बार का वर्ल्ड कप क्रोश जीते क्योंकि बहुत पोअर कंट्री भी है जीतना चाहिए All right. So from our uh, you know football stadium let's go back to Russia and see what's uh, what Croatia and France have in store for us tonight. Fans of France and Croatia are counting down the hours. until the main game of 2018 FIFA World Cup the final match history will be made tonight when France and Croatia come face to face at the Lushniki stadium and the fans cannot wait long enough all the small countries around the world and there are lots of small countries around the world like us you know they want us to win they support us and that will be i think big justice once in a life that small guy beat a bigger guy you know and that's the reason we're going to win because we feel all these senses and power je pense que ce sera un très gros match un grand match qu'on attend tous depuis très longtemps depuis maintenant 20 ans un match qui nous fera entrer encore une fois de plus dans l'histoire et qui nous amènera avec mérite et honneur cette deuxième étoile With a population of just over 4 million, the Croatian dream of winning their first world championship is something that's driving the country. France, on the other hand, is looking for World Cup glory for the second time, the first in 20 years. The game will kick off at 8:30 p.m. Continue to talk to them later on the show. Over to you, Frank, for the moment. Thank you, Tina, and thank you for taking us through what the 
children of My Angels Academy have been through, you know, some turbulent times, but they have succeeded in the end and they seem to be doing really well. Uh, all the very best for them in their future endeavors as well. We have uh, a few guests in our studio as well, right here. And uh, let's find out from them which team they are rooting for. We've got a couple of coaches too, who've represented uh, their teams at the highest level. We'll talk about this game. Uh, your name uh, for the camera, please. Or up. क्या सोचते हैं आज आज कौन जीतेगा मैं तो क्रोएशिया के बारे में सोचता हूँ क्रोएशिया और आप हाँ क्रोएशिया के बारे सोच रहे हैं क्योंकि वो ज़्यादा जो जितने मैंने मैच देखे हैं उससे बेटर जो उनका टेम्परामेंट है मैच खेलने का और अदरवाइज अगर वो एक गोल से डाउन भी हैं उसके बावजूद भी वो इतना बेहतरीन खेलती है कि वो उस गोल को इक्वल करने के बाद वो जीत जाती है तो जितने मैच देखे हैं उसके बेस पे तो आज 99% परसेंट क्रोएशिया का चांस है जीतने का अच्छा क्रोएशिया सो अनदर पर्सन रूटिंग फॉर दर अंडर डॉग दे विच टीम वुड यू चूज आई एम चित्रा पोखरिया एंड आई एम पी टीचर एंड एसोसिएटेड विद टी एस आर एस आई थिंक I'll go with Croatia because they are the babies. <laughs> you know, look at the population; it's like 45 lakhs. You know, and see, let's see. All right, Croatia is what uh, the coaches here believe uh, is going to do well in this final of the FIFA World Cup. In the meantime, of course, let's go across to Russia and see how Russia is preparing for this final match. A month ago, when the FIFA World Cup 2018 kicked off in Russia, football fans were told to attend the tournament at their own risk. Russia was portrayed as a malignant player on the world stage, and President Putin as a persona non grata. But several weeks into the tournament, and this perception has completely changed. Scores of football players, fans, as well as media persons who've been to Russia have shared positive experiences from the country. Former Germany captain Lothar Matthaus says this World Cup has been one of the best in the past 40 years. Russian President Vladimir Putin believes the tournament has helped break down many stereotypes about his country. We are not ashamed of ourselves. In Russia, we are always happy to see old friends and new friends, and now they are with us. They are more than ever. They are with us. 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 They are I mean, fan behavior is very, very crucial to football. In the past, the game was uh, not tainted, maybe marred by such incidents, uh, which never really reflects what happens on the field because it's a body contact sport. You 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 end up playing rough and tough. So, best football in terms of the results, best football in terms of the goals scored, the way the goals were scored, so many set pieces, uh, marvels on the field, and. Small nations have proved that they have progressed, and the gap between the established, the champions, and those who were dreaming to become champions has narrowed. So, which has resulted in very competitive games, and the ultimate winner, I think, is the fan. 
and the game globally because um, now there is talk of uh, more teams playing uh, in, in the World Cup and India is also dreaming to play the World Cup now. And that's why I'm wearing this jersey today. We hope to see this jersey in the FIFA World Cup sometime soon. Maybe 2026 will be the year, Nilanj, where 48 teams will play in the World Cup. 46 if I'm not 46, wrong. Yeah. 46. Yeah, I'm, uh, let's hope so. Um, there's a long, the road is long in fact and all needs to, all stakeholders one needs to uh, walk the path together, the road together. Coming back to this World Cup, uh, there's always two sides. One is off the field, on, one is on the field. On the field, the logistics, the marketing, the transportation, the teams, the fan engagement, the fan experience. And what Vijay sir said, that there have been no incidents which have been reported. We need to remember we are living in the, living in the social media era. Gone are those days when only around 2,000 journalists are covering the World Cup and those 2,000 are not enough to go to into each nook and corner of the country which is covering the World Cup. The fans which have come in are there into each and nook and corner who themselves are carrying a snazzy mobile phone uploading what they are seeing. Not a single incident has come out from there. That speaks about the success of the World Cup of the field. The administration as well. Absolutely. I mean, Russia needs to get a pat on its back for what it has done. Talking about Russia, Jyoti, do you believe that the World Cup has opened our minds and the way we think about Russia and shown us a little more of Russia? Definitely, you know, I had, and I have a couple of friends who have gone actually to watch the World Cup there and even hearing about Russia from there has changed my perception of the country. It's, it's a friendly country, it's not something that we thought of it being, you know, when, when we first heard of Russia before this World Cup. And seeing, you know, the, the general, the population there, accepting so many people coming in to watch the, the, the fans coming in to watch the games. Uh, it's been a fantastic experience and, I mean, personally, I'd love to vis visit the country now. Vijay <laughs> Lokpalli, <laughs> let's talk about another aspect. Four red cards in the entirety of the World Cup. 63 matches played, only four red cards. That's incredible, isn't it? And only one direct red card, that too for a handball where, a ball, where the ball was going straight into the net. Yes, if you see, there, are, there have been rough tackles also. The referees have been very strict. Players know that the referee is going to be strict because there is a video assistant, uh, uh, you know, there's video assistance. So, even if it, there were times in the past when uh, players would have committed blatant fouls, terrible fouls and got away with it because there was no referral system there. And here, it has helped the game grow. It has helped the, uh, there are very little stoppages. I mean, referees have also allowed uh, the advantage rule to help continue the, the, the play because stoppages means uh, it, it, you know, your mind is off the action. Uh, that's the problem with hockey. There are too many stoppages. And football, uh, this World Cup, you see, yes, very few red cards, which means that the players have begun to respect each other more, not trying to use unfair means to to stop the other player. Uh, you, you you begin to realize that, yes, maybe he's more skillful, so let, I mean, I have to accept that. And it which is again a good sign. It's football, like Pele said, it's a beautiful game. It's a great spectacle. And we have seen in this World Cup some glorious moments, uh, which has gone to prove that, yes, it is the game to be followed globally. It is a beautiful game. It probably would have been a tad more better or a more beautiful if people stopped diving, Nilachan. I mean, you saw a lot of that <laughs> in this World Cup. One player in particular, we've spoken a lot about it. But generally, on the whole, maybe play acting should be kept out of the field. Uh, if you look at this World Cup, uh, there has been a sizable reduction in play acting, except for that gentleman called Naima, um, uh, who did not rely on his skills, rather, he could have uh, done much more in the World Cup with his skills. Uh, uh, one more thing which Vijay sir said, I just want to, if I am allowed to add to that. Very rarely have we spoken or teams complained that we have been cheated by the referees. Hmm. All previous editions, there was a dissent against referees among coaches, among the players, among the fans. Oh, I didn't get that penalty. Oh, I didn't get that. He should have been red carded. How many? Maybe some one or two, three incidents have been there, but not as much as we used to have or we are used to see in even major leagues, the Euros, the Asian Continental Championships and most importantly, the World Cup. I guess the referees and everyone, everyone else also has realised, Jyoti, that the world's eyes are on them. People are watching them with a hawk eye and they can't really get away with you know, blatant mistakes or just blatant bias. 
Look, I think uh, you know football's come a long way, but I think refereeing has also. You know, as the game has gotten better, gotten faster, you know, progressed, referees have to go through a huge, you know, uh, check system before they even come to the stage. And uh, these are very experienced referees, are very fit referees, and um, you know, they they go through so much training to be at this stage. So. Uh, you know, hats off to even the refereeing system for for you know moving with the game and improving so much. If one thing has to improve, Vijay Lokpali, what should it be? What could have been better in this World Cup? Do you think? Um, I think, um, like you said, play acting. Uh, there could be some time uh, later. There could be some uh, harsh, uh, strict steps uh, taken in this direction. But what I wanted to share was that uh, we've all talked about refereeing and today's game. All eyes will be on the play players. But for me, I'm going to watch the Argentine referee. For me, he is the star of the World Cup, very strict. And you should see how players are in awe of him. I mean, when he says, when he calls for a foul, they go away quietly, they don't dispute. So to add to Nilanjan's uh, views, it's probably his his personality, uh, a very imposing personality, he's been a player. There and was you a certain Italian referee a few years ago who commanded the same kind of respect from the players as absolutely. well. Absolutely, but this gentleman, he commands respect and you'll see today he will be the star of the final. <laughs> uh, talking about referees, Nilanjan, do you believe that uh, the referees could have been far more consistent? Maybe, you know, if you look at the referees coming from different continents, their refereeing style too changes. You know, a, a, a referee from South America probably is far more liberal with the kind of fouls that are committed than if you compare it to a referee from, say, Europe. Uh, I don't agree to that necessarily. Uh, my apologies for that because the refereeing uh, regulations and the guidelines stay the same all over the country, all over the world. The intensity of the game maybe in Europe is much higher than what it is in South America, North America, Asia or any other continents. But the referees who are here have been filtered so many times. It's means climbing up that ladder to be in the FIFA World Cup is, is absolutely magical. We always speak about the players, means only the best among the best are there. It's not only the capability, it's the mental frame, it's the fitness, it's the integrity. There was a talks of uh, reports of three so one Saudi uh, referee who had to be pulled out because there were some integrity issues. And all the three two Saudi referees, assistant referees who were with him had, uh, had to unfortunately be out of the uh, World Cup. Integrity issues are huge. A lot of pressure on the referee too without at the end any, of the day. Without any doubt. <laughs> one mistake uh, can cost a team all the sweat, all the preparation, the World Cup. And mind you, we all would be watching not to watch the referee. You'd be watching to watch watch the 11 v 11. So that's the danger which the referee always needs to keep in mind. He's not the star, but the star behind all the stars. And before I slip into a break right now, Jyoti, a quick comment on VAR. Um, I'm pro VAR. I think it's helped this tournament. I think it's helped uh, get a slightly more fair result. Uh, sometimes, you know, teams feel undone by like a penalty that they thought they, they deserved. So that's been done away with. I think that's why we've seen a lot more penalties. So as a player, I'm pro VAR, but I think it needs a few, uh, it needs to be tweaked a bit in terms of, you know, maybe not the main referee calling for it and maybe, you know, just hearing about it from his, his uh, earpiece. Um, it can be smoother. I feel the process can be smoother instead of stopping the game, him going to see the, the screen and, you know, calling for uh, for referral. They can tweak that system to make it slightly smoother. All right. We'll talk about other things. But first, we'll slip into a short break. And on the other side, we'll talk to some young girls who represented India in this sport. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
into the majestic forecourt of Rashtrapati Bhavan and you'll come across the Jaipur column. A gift to the Viceroy from Savai Madhu Singh, the Maharaja of Jaipur, to commemorate the creation of the new capital. The 145 meter high column is crowned with six pointed crystal stars on a bronze lotus and inside the stone shaft runs a steel tube which weighs a little more than five tons. The base of the column has text conceived by Lord Irwin and Sir Edwin Lutyens inscribed on it. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha TV's coverage of the FIFA World Cup. I'm Frank Razum Pereira. Before I go across to the Indian Neves, let's go across to our three footballing centres and see what they have in store for us. Rajat Kane joins us from Goa, Panchanan Mishra from Kochi and Sandeep Yash from Kolkata. First, of course, let me go across to Panchanan who's standing by in Kochi and get us a, a, a feel of what's happening there. Over to you, Panchanan. Frank, it's a, it's a big day. It's a final uh, between France and Croatia. And uh, Kerala is, uh, 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 being a football crazy state, it's very much ready there. Uh, first of all, I want to show you the glimpse uh, here in uh, Rajiv Gandhi Stadium. It's a big screen has been placed there uh, like uh, uh, the previous World Cups also. And the fans from little ones to big ones are all there. Uh, the, 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 there are some uh, painting is going on there. There's this flag. To which team you are supporting? Croatia. Croatia. The, then a small supporter is also there and uh, their uh, flags are on their hand, the painting they have. Uh, what are your feeling to, regarding today's match? Yeah, it will be a very, uh, very good match because France is so strong and uh, especially Croatia's uh, attacking playing is uh, so interesting. So it will be a, a good match today. Yeah. Kerala was always very much crazy about football. What do you think regarding the matches and the football in Kerala? In Kerala football is growing. We can see in, within some years, India will participate the World Champion, World Cup. We are waiting for that, sir. What is your opinion regarding today's match? I think today's match, Croatia will win. Because every in football history, every 20 years, a new team will team is winning. So, Croatia will win. So, Frank, we uh, also went uh, to many places in Kerala, especially in Malabar region, where uh, uh, football uh, originated. But we find that... Uh, uh, Apart from this Brazil and Argentina, who are uh, who are always favourite for the Keralites, but they were uh, not in, in the race. Uh, so the Croatia is the team which uh, is getting a big support from Kerala. So uh, I think it, the match will be very interesting, and we uh, all are gathered here to watch the match. And all preparations are here, uh, are in a full gear. Okay. Over to you, Frank. Okay. Kochi is supporting Croatia. Delhi is supporting Croatia. Let's go across to Kolkata and see which team Kolkata is supporting. Over to you, Sandeep Yash. Frank, uh, thank you. Right now I'm at Kolkata Press Club. It's a prestigious place where most of the journalists and football enthusiasts gather to watch football. And this time also the World Cup final, there has been, uh, there has been an arrangement here to watch the World Cup football final right here. And uh, right now I can tell you that Kolkata is in dilemma. Head says France and heart says Croatia. We would like to have opinion of uh, Kuntala Ghosh Dastidar, who is a former World Cup uh, a player of, from India. She's been captain of the team that played the World Cup. Welcome to the show, Kuntala. And what is your opinion? Who's going to win? Uh, today, match is really 50 50 match. Our favorite is, Calcutta's favorite team is France, but heart says Croatia. Because a uh, lot of uh, Kolkata always 
welcome the newcomers uh, if a new team like if we go back little go back 1998 against france they lost the game in the semi final and croatia got the third place and afterwards we have seen that croatia is coming like anything they are they are qualifying in every tournaments and they are doing very fast rapidly they are uh, coming up uh, uh, where we can see that uh, uh, italy and holland couldn't qualify and this time without uh, i think this time uh, the, uh, we they, we said that uh, that underdog this team is underdog but they have proved we are not underdog when always we are thinking of german we think of argentina brazil that they are smash now and this team says that we we are the winners so we always want to see a new teams uh, it is uh, important to see that with a small nation where 40 lakhs people uh, uh, where they are there and they have developed the football like anything and the, i will come to the professionalism where calcutta couldn't come that one of the player they take, couldn't taking risk to play as a professional player and to me they have proved that if professionalism is highly accepted because most of the players uh, today uh, who uh, whom they are playing they are all they are playing for the european leagues and uh, this professionalism will help to win the Thank you. We have uh, Subhanshu Roy is a football historian. Subhanshu, irrespective of who wins this World Cup, how will this game go down in the history of World Cup? See, this uh, 21st edition of FIFA World Cup, it uh, proved all, all uh, speculation wrong. And you know, in the fair, in the grand finale, uh, all favorite teams are already out. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Right. Thank you, Sandeep Yash, for taking us through what's happening there in Kolkata as well at the Press Club, is where you're at at the moment. Let me go across to the fun-loving state of Goa and see what's happening there with my colleague Rajat K. Thanks, Frank. I'm at the picturesque and serene setting of Bay 15 at Goa and Donapola. While setting, settings can be serene, but there is enthusiasm all over Goa. This particular place has done up itself in all all possible uh, football props. Like I'm at the, at the outside shack here. But before we go to the football, which is certainly flavour of the day, let me go to the food, which is certainly spice of the hour. I have with me. the chef here kapil kapil what is hi what is special for tonight the big day okay it's a big day yes a uh, lot of special uh, we have uh, we are into goan food plus some of the inspired dishes if you could see the goan filet burger and the local uh, kingfish which we have goan preparation then some chicken shakoti then we have vegetable kaldeen the classic curry the local goan red rice Besides that, we also have some lovely desserts. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask about that. I mean, there you can see uh, these are football yes. wrapped the desserts, yes. right? It's, it's uh, those. Yes, those are chocolates. But again, some of them they have uh, rum. Some of them they have the local uh, fanny. So you can get surprises. Right, Frank. So football is the flavor in Goa. So as we say, even desserts have the flavors of Goa. We would just one once again uh, Kapil who, who is a favorite team for today's game whom you think today is Today is my personal favorite is Croatia right one yes more sorry yeah sorry Croatia is the favorite Yes Croatia is the favorite for today Why do you think that Croatia has better chance To be honest they are underdogs but they have performed well in each and every game so far so that's the reason it's my favorite for today and I think Croatia right Right so there we have uh, Frank so one more Croatian fan for tonight's game from Goa Frank All right thank you Rajat for taking us through what's happening there in Goa what I wouldn't do to switch places with you and be there in Goa right now with the beach in my background of course talking about the background I'm going to change it a little bit now I'm going to walk across uh, to where our studio guests are sitting and talk to them of course about uh, what the young girls have done in their lives and how uh, football has helped them and what they think about this match if i could get a mic here it would be good uh, but in the meantime till we get that mic here i'm going to talk about the match between uh, 
France and Croatia. France and Croatia, your name and who do you think is um, going to win? I'm Smriti um, and I'm supporting Croatia today. Yes, yeah, so why? Um, I think everyone's been calling them the underdogs and it's supposed to be the edgy choice apparently but I believe quality-wise they're on par with France right now and yeah. A smart answer from a young girl and uh, let's talk to another young girl here and find out who she thinks should win this match. Who do you think should win the match today? Uh, I'm Ketki. I think France will win hmm. for the simple reason that they're um, like they're technically very sound and I don't think they'll be as overconfident as they were during their match against Portugal in 2016. So okay. I think they've got this. Let's talk about your footballing journey now. You've played a bit of football in your young life. Yeah. Tell us, take us through your football journey. Um, I started playing when I was about 12 years old. Um, and yeah, I, I played for India twice mm -hmm. uh, in the under 14 and how was category. It? It, was, it, was, it was a good experience. Yeah, it was a great experience. The Indian team is really, really good and the coaches are all, always like, really supportive and they try to teach us everything that they can. And yeah, it's, it's a great experience. Mm. Smithy, you two have played for India? Yeah, at the under-19 level. Okay, take us to that journey. Um, it was my first camp, I think two years back, and I was super scared, obviously, mm. but... Um, Why were you scared? It's scary, I mean, new atmosphere, <laughs> new people, and competitive and everything, but um, the level really surprised me, because everyone's really good, and the coaches are knowledgeable and experienced, so yeah. And what did you bring back from the camp? Um, Not physically, but <laughs> mentally. Just uh, my ability to integrate with new people and obviously so much more football. And have you put that to your daily use as well when you play? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh. Yeah. It's your name? Yeah, I'm Avika mm -hmm. and I'm going to go with France today. Mm -hmm. My heart and my mind both think it's going to be France. They're definitely, uh, definitely more experienced and I'm going to go with France okay, today. You're going to go with France today, Avika. But uh, have you played football? Yes, I have. At what level? Uh, at the international level. Okay, and how has that experience been? It's honestly like amazing. It's the best thing you could ask for. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I played last year uh, at the under 15 category. Oh. Yeah. And your friend too? No? Yeah, I'm Anushka. I've, uh, I'm also going to go with France because obviously they have, a, like, they have an amazing squad. And I've always supported France because I have my some, like some of my family is also there, so it's all the way France for me. Okay, the future of Indian women's football believes that France is going to win the match today against Croatia. And uh, we'll find out from our audience as well, the young boys here, now that we've spoken to the women, as to who they believe is going to win the match today, France or Croatia? Croatia. Croatia. I, think, I think France had that there, Dilanjit. France or Croatia? The richer cousins versus the poorer cousins, I would say. <laughs> richer cousins versus poorer cousins. Okay, Jyoti? I'm going to go with Croatia today. Has, has Jyoti been an inspiration, by the way? Young girls, has Jyoti, because Jyoti has played uh, football at the highest level for India. Has she helped in any way? Yeah, she has. We've played with her for seniors and like in senior when we represented Delhi. So she's always been my captain. So I really look up to her and I like want to, I like playing with her a lot. So does she lead from the front? Yeah, yeah, she does. Oh, for sure. Ketki, Ketki, am I right? Yeah. Uh, is she a bully? No, she's not. She's really supportive and she's honestly the best senior to have. Uh, and Smithy, what are the what are the kind of facilities that you have when you go to camp and you know, do you believe that it can be better? Maybe something else can be done? I think like everything about it can be changed because it's honestly not that great. We really have to struggle too. I, I don't know how much trouble you're going to get into <laughs> for saying that, yeah, but but I, I didn't but, say but, that. but 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 I, but I think that's you know I I think we should take it positively because coming from a young girl like that who's played for India as well, you know they probably understand that they can do better if they get better facilities as well and it will help them in going a long way. I think I should ask Nilanjan to have a, uh, you know, to say something about that because he's the media officer of the Indian national team. Uh, Nilanjan, can you put in a word for our young girls? Things are changing. Uh, the manner in which uh, the teams used to travel and prepare some five days back, it's an entirely different experience. Obviously, with each and every day coming up, uh, things would be better can be better and on the right track and the road is long as the first sentence which I uttered in the show. Alright, okay. Uh, 
before we move on any further, let's take a look at as to how these two teams, France and Croatia, have reached the final of the FIFA World Cup 2018. And uh, you know how they're prepared for this World Cup, what has their road to the final been like. And we'll be back and talk about both the teams' complete analysis and strategy after this package. Croatia has worked hard to be at the final of the FIFA World Cup. You can even say that they have worked the hardest. No, we are not talking about the thirst for World Cup glory. We are talking about the sheer physical strain on the Croatian team. Just take a look at their matches in this edition of the World Cup and you will agree with us. They have come from behind to win all their knockout games. They have gone to extra time thrice and to penalty shootouts twice. Before they came face to face with England in the semi-final, there were doubts over how they would get through the entire match, whether they had the stamina, but somehow they did and pulled through that too in style. <laughs> Reći ako nisu spremni 100%. Stvorili smo takvu grupu igrača, takav odnos da oni ako ne budu 100% spremni će sami reći da neće igrati. Znaju koliko je ulog to u finale, znaju koliko je lijepo igrati u finalu, ali ako oni ne budu sami od sebe mogli dati sve, oni će to pošteno reći nama. I samo Guraš naprijed, bez obzira ima... U, na tom putu koji je dug, ima uspona i padova, ali bez obzira šta god da se desi, trebaš vjerovati dalje u sebe e, i, i to je to. I borit se za svoje, za svoje snove i za svoje uspjehe. I to je ono što je mene uvijek vodilo i što mi tako da eto, to, to je to. Former champions France have been a fine example of how to spread the workload. The squad has no dearth of established names in its ranks and has up-and-coming stars too. The team has played defensive in this World Cup, especially after they have taken the lead. And even though it does not always please everyone, they don't seem to care. What happened two years ago must serve us. Euh, par rapport à ce qui nous attend demain. Et ces neuf joueurs-là savent, forcément, il y a, il y a des choses à faire euh, euh, différemment, mais c'est que quand on a vécu une situation qu'on peut dire, on appréhende certainement mieux ou différemment euh, l'approche d'un tel match, parce qu'une finale, c'est toujours un événement euh, à part. Pour être honnête avec vous, on est, on est dans notre bulle. Euh, bien évidemment, on est au courant de, de ce qui se passe en France. Et... Et encore plus euh, avec les images que l'on a pu voir après le match face à, face à la Belgique. Mais euh, loin de là l'idée euh, de notre côté de, voilà, de, de s'y croire déjà. Euh, demain, il y a un adversaire de, de très grande qualité euh, qui a autant de mérite que nous de, 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 de se retrouver en, en finale et qui a démontré... Euh, Cette équipe a démontré qu'elle avait des valeurs et des ressources physiques et mentales. This tournament has so far been impossible to predict and the final is no different. But both sides are strong in the midfield, so a beautiful game tonight is a given. Well, let's now go across uh, to Tina, who's standing by in our stats zone to get us the head-to-head -head numbers of both the teams. So, over to you, Tina. Thank you, Frank. Welcome to our stat zone. So, France and Croatia will meet tonight at the Luzhniki Stadium in what will be only their sixth meeting ever. France have so far never lost to Croatia. In the five matches that they have played, two have been won by France. In fact, three have been won by France and two have been drawn. The last time they played each other was way back in March 2011. Let's take a look at the last five matches that the two teams have played. 
They first played in 1998 at the World Cup. Croatia was then making its debut at the big stage and France would go on to win the World Cup that year. The two met in the semi-finals where France beat Croatia 2-1. They played their second match more than a year later in November 1999. France won that match 2-3-0. The third match between the two teams was played in May 2000. France won this match 2-0. The next two matches ended as draws, one with the scoreline of 2-2, the other goalless. History tells us that either side can win, so we'll have to wait till the end of the match to know. Even though France have the marginal edge on paper, Croatia have come back from the brink so often that they are probably running on pure adrenaline that might just power them through. Back to you, Frank. Thank you, Tina, for taking us through the head-to-head -head between the two teams, France and Croatia. Talking about the two teams, of course, we'll build up to the big finale, the grand finale of the next one hour. But before that, we'll slip into a short break, complete analysis and strategy on the other side of the two teams. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching the FIFA World Cup coverage on Rajya Sabha television. The Warriors, of course, will go into battle one final time in about 90 minutes from now. Butterfly, certainly as far as France and Croatia are concerned. Let's now focus on France for the next 15 minutes and then we'll focus for Croatia for the next 15 minutes. Making its third appearance in the World Cup final, France will be hoping to win the coveted title for the second time after a long wait of 20 years. But the team is taking on a strong Croatian side. Let's take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of Didier Deschamps' side. After making it to the World Cup Finals for the first time since 2006, 
and a long wait of 20 years, France will be hoping to lift the coveted title for the second time. But the Le Bleu will be up against Croatia who have a thirst for the World Cup and a sense of revenge for their semi-final defeat to France back in 1998. This is the third ever World Cup final for France. They got here after getting the better of Belgium in the semi-finals, beating them 1-0. But their road to the final has been impressive, if a little bumpy. France started their World Cup campaign with a 2-1 victory over Australia before beating Peru 1-0 in their second group game. But their final group game was one of the least compelling games at this World Cup as it ended up as the only goalless draw of the tournament against Denmark. In the round of 16, the Le Bleu defeated Argentina 4-3, eliminating them from the competition. In the quarterfinals, they were put to the test against Uruguay but produced a much more composed and solid display, sending the South Americans home with a 2-0 victory. Their next game was the semi-final bout against Belgium when Samuel Umtiti's second-half goal proved to be enough to see off Belgium's golden generation. Didier Deschamps' side has several positives that have worked well in this World Cup. These trends have been the driving force behind their success in Russia. The strongest of them being that despite not having been at their best, they have managed to string together victories because they have worked well as a unit. Deschamps has managed to build a side that is durable and solid and knows how to win. With players like Benjamin Pavard, Rafael Varane, Samuel Umtiti and goalkeeper Hugo Lloris at the back, their defence looks solid and sturdy while Kylian Mbappe and Antoine Griezmann have led from the front. The influence of midfield mainstay in Golo Kante can also not be understated. The Chelsea midfielder has been one of the most standout performers in the World Cup so far and will be key against Croatia. A lack of goals from striker Olivier Giroud has not stopped the Champs from including him in every game, either as a starter or a substitute. The French coach admits Giroud is integral to the team's tactics. Giroud's aerial presence is a threat to the opposition, but a point of worry could be his shots being off-target. His 13 shots at goal have been the most off-target shots a player has had at a World Cup since 1966. But his goal drought in Russia also disguises the fact that he's actually equal fourth on the list of all-time scorers for France, tied with none other than Zinedine Zidane on 31 goals. All right, now we're going to take a look at the possible starting lineup as far as France is concerned, the formation as well that they are most likely to play in this match and whether or not there will be any changes to the side that uh, uh, reached the finals of the FIFA World Cup 2018 and beat Belgium, of course, in the semi final. Let's take a look now at France's uh, starting lineup on our screens, if we can have it at the moment. France on our screens right now. Loris in goal. Uh, Pavard, Varan, Umtiti, and Hernandez will make up the back four. Kante and Pogba will be the uh, defending midfielders, of course. Griezmann, Mbappe, and Matuidi will make up the attacking midfielders. Olivier Giroud, the lone striker as far as this team is concerned. You know, uh, Nilanjan, let's talk about the team now. This will probably be the team that Didier Deschamps will go on to the pitch with. No changes from the previous matches. Uh, there's no logic of changing the team. A winning combination, that too, for a World Cup final. Unless there are any niggles or someone's unfortunately suspended for any yellow cards or red cards. Uh, should be going with the winning combination always. You know, uh, Vijay Lokpalli, as far as uh, Giroud is concerned, he's uh, been criticised over the last uh, few matches because he's not delivered. But uh, do you expect Didier Deschamps to make that change and bring in someone else in place of Giroud? No, I think like Nilanjan said, uh, who would you, why would you like to disturb a winning combination? That's the policy most coaches follow, managers follow and Jeru, maybe you never know he's kept the, his best for the biggest platform, the biggest stage and today he may excel and try and surprise everyone, even his coach. So, this probably is an ideal 
lineup to begin with an ideal lineup to begin with is what both the men are calling it uh, jyoti let's talk a little bit about the lineup itself you know you have griezmann matuidi and mbappe the attacking options apart from giro as far as uh, uh, france is concerned do you expect them to do something different from what they have been doing maybe uh, mbappe playing just behind giro maybe griezmann playing a floater's role moving to the left and moving to the right um i think what france see as we've seen in this tournament what france likes to do is they like playing a direct game they like playing on the counters quick direct game so what happens is that jiru plays up front uh, anyway but mbappe sort of goes up with him and stays up uh, uh, quite often which and then what happens is that leaves kanté and pogba and griezmann to sort of drop and handle the midfield together because mbappe is used to staying up So sure. so what happens is that anyway Giroud gets his support through Mbappe uh because he is someone who's running you know box to box anyway and likes staying up. Um so I mean this is the uh, strategy of Giroud does have support up front so I wouldn't call him the lone striker. Uh the end of the day when he's up front there he always has someone with him. Let's talk about the two defensive midfielders uh, Nilanjan, Kanté and Pogba. Will they have to work overtime today? You are blessed to have someone like Engolo Kanté in your team. Any coach would means vouch to have someone one like his team and the 50% of success of French team goes to this guy. Hmm. Because when you strategize for a match, you need to take the opposition out of the match. How do you do that? You look and target the best player of the rival opposition, someone who can be the streamer around, be the fulcrum of where the rival team can be roaming around. He took off Messi in the match. So he he was after Eden Hazard though Hazard had some time he is the one who would be trying to get rid of Luka Modric and take him out entirely out of the match very small guy and this is for everyone the other day we were discussing a gentleman in the studio prior to the studio uh, said oh looking at Jyoti oh you are not that big enough how do you play football great footballers the greater ones the greatest are not huge the greatest the huge ones are like oliver giro the target man who may not be that much skillful but plays who rule roost or define a footballing match to its winning momentum are the shorter ones and this guy and pogba has a huge role to play especially because france defend in numbers and when they defend in numbers these two fall back so it's flat four plus the two in front six with the others also coming in and around them so those six would be trying their best to scuttle the croatian midfield or means frustrate the croatians in the midfield who have the history of playing the maximum number of passes in this world cup this is probably going to this is probably what's going to happen pogba is going to come here and kante too is probably going to drop just next to uh, pogba there in the lineup and then they're going to stifle modric and the others not give them any place to move around is what you're suggesting you know uh, vijay lokpalli a word on pogba uh, you know a big name plays for a big club big club uh has he underperformed a little bit or do you believe that he's played true to his character in this world cup uh i think uh, to add to what nilanja said kante yes he is everywhere but pogba i think is the key you'll have to uh, if you go back to the last match he is bolstering the defense you'll find him defending the corners then you have to take a corner he is there to take the corner and then he is running back to 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 support the uh, midfield and the defense so he is everywhere his uh he's a, he's a tireless individual an amazing athlete with his long strides and kante yes i mean uh, again a tireless uh, and and very innovative he is trying to create space where there is none and with the the speed which mbappe produces and electric uh, runs it it can it can unsettle the opposition uh, especially uh croatia which may come with a lot of pressure of having playing the first final and these are all experienced guys and we're forgetting griezmann i mean he is also he has he is um, a very versatile uh, footballer if you look at uh, his game i think um, to me pogba is the key for today's pogba game pogba is the key for today's game is what uh, uh, vijay lokpalli is suggesting you know uh, jyoti before i ask you who's key as far as this game is concerned for the french side let's look at the back four because we haven't concentrated on them much hernandez um tt varan and pavard the two pillars at the back varan and um tt the real madrid and barcelona combination working for france thus far in the tournament we'd expect them to have a good game today as well yes working a lot better than the spanish uh, combination of the barcelona and real madrid defenders these two have been really solid at the back um and 
I've noticed that set, on set pieces, Giroud comes back as well and uses his height um, to to get the headers away. Um, but looking at the the, the wing backs, I think Pavard moves up a lot more than Hernandez does. So they do. He does a lot of overlapping down the right wing. Um, we've seen him get up sometimes even into the the penalty uh, box of the uh, opposition very often. So they, I can see a lot of lot of uh, moves coming down the right flank. Uh, firstly, from Mbappe, and secondly, with Pavard, you know, uh, overlapping on the right. Uh, not as many coming from the left side. Would you say that the left side is the weak link as far as this French side is concerned? Hernandez, you know, probably the weakest of the lot, and that could be exploited by Rebic and uh, Rosalco, who've done extremely well against Stones in the previous match. Um, I wouldn't call them the weak link because I think they are the slightly more defensive-minded players as opposed to the, their right side and that might actually be um, harder for the creations to get in from that side because these two are going to be sort of slightly more in their half. Uh, these two, because Mbappe and Pavard go up so much, there is a space created on the right uh, sort of uh, third uh, attacking quarter that I think Croatia can take advantage of if they, if they target that. You know, probably Matuidi is also going to fall back in this and, you know, and help out Hernandez there. And, you know, it's going to work a little better for France that way. Nilanjan, on the whole, uh, do you believe that this is a French side that's going to play on the counter? Or do you think that they are the favourites? People are considering them to be the favourites. They're going to take the attack to Croatia. I believe they would be playing the same manner uh, in which uh, they have been playing. Uh, the side has been has been successful in playing percentage football they have been able to lift the game when they need they have been able to slow down the game when they need from a distance you believe everyone is carrying a remote corner a regulator has to regula regulate the pace of the match uh, Giro is the target man up front because of his big physique when they go on defend in numbers sometimes six sometimes seven he holds the ball onto the chest may not have been able to have a single shot in the frame as yet and then the Bappe and the Griezmann and the Kante and the Pogba there in flashes i believe if if croatia if croatia as and when france goes on to those lightning counter attacks can frustrate them hold them the transition of the from the croatian side the transition from defense to attack if they're able to counter attack those counter attacks of the french side there would be gaps in this french defense otherwise it's very hard to break them down when they defend very rightly pointed out by jyoti bape means wishes or loves to move out so is Pavat and let's not forget Perisic had a lovely match the last uh, match on the left flank I believe that's the space where they would be likely to what do you say attack more Croatia and if they crowd that area much Croatia and are able to take off Bape or force him not to go that much into the counter attacks with his lightning pace maybe the Croatian people would be a bit happy or relieved all right, uh, talking about Croatia now, of course, uh, let's move on and take a look at how Croatia, of course, has prepared for this particular match. Croatia has worked hard to reach the final, which is their first ever, but the side is up against the team currently ranked seventh in the world, France. Despite playing three back-to-back -back extra time games, the Croats are still hungry for more and will be chasing World Cup glory with all their hearts. Let's take a look at the strength and weaknesses of uh, the Croatian side. Croatia are first-time finalists at the World Cup and they are more than familiar with their opponents. Croatia have never beaten France in five attempts, the most famous one being the semi-final in 1998 when the Le Bleu beat debutants Vetrini 2-1. In this edition, Croatia made it to the final after defeating England 2-1 in the semi-finals. The Croats, whose best performance in a World Cup was the semi-final appearance back in 1998, entered the tournament as dark horses and have proved that their team is no less than a champion. They started their World Cup campaign with a 2-0 victory over Nigeria and in their second group game, the Croats beat South American giants Argentina 3-0, leaving them in serious danger of exiting in the group stage. 
In their final group game, they faced World Cup debutants Iceland and defeated them 2-1 to qualify for the knockout phase with a 100% win record. In the round of 16, they faced a strong defensive side Denmark and the game went down to penalties, but the Croats kept their composure and defeated the Danes 3-2 on penalties. In the quarterfinals, the Croats were up against hosts Russia and after another nail-biting match, the Croatian side managed to eliminate the hosts 4-3 on penalties after the game ended on 2-2. But they faced a real test in their semi-final game against England, the third consecutive match they played that went into extra time. This time, however, they sealed victory in extra time, creating history by reaching the World Cup final for the first time. The biggest strength of this Croatian team has been their mental toughness and the character that they have shown so far in the tournament. They have found themselves in difficult situations, situations that have put them under immense pressure. But every time they have managed to find a way through. Captain Luka Modric has led the team from the front and has emerged as one of the most impactful players in the ongoing World Cup. He, along with Ivan Rakitic, has been key for Croatia to come this far in the tournament, while Ivan Perisic and Mario Mandzukic have been putting the ball into the net whenever needed. But one can also not neglect the contributions of the Croatian goalkeeper, Daniel Subasic. There are several weaknesses too that the side needs to overcome. Despite Dejan Dovren's recent claims of being the best in the world, he remains susceptible to pace and there will be plenty of that on offer when France takes the field. Fullbacks Sime Vrasalko and Ivan Strinic too haven't been all that assured defensively, which may be a cause of concern for Dalic and his side. Well, from the French team now, let's take a look at uh, the Croatians' possible starting lineup, their formation as well, and how they could possibly line up for this particular match. That's on your screens right now. Supersic in goal. Uh, Rosalko, Lovren, Vida, and Strinic will make up the back four. One defensive midfielder in Brozovic. Uh, four attacking midfielders Rebic, Modric, Rakitic, and Perisic. And one out and out forward, which will be Mandzukic. Uh, the one who scored the winning goal in the semi-final against England. A 4-1-4-1 kind of a formation as far as Croatia is concerned. Vijay Lokpalli, if you look at this Croatian side, you know, 4-1-4-1 kind of a formation. It's a formation that has worked for the team with the Brozovic as a defensive, a defensive midfielder. It gives Rakitic and Modric the option to move forward and move freely. Yeah, I think much will depend on first the first 15 20 minutes they we, we know i mean they have their set uh, formations uh modric is the guy i mean he he runs the whole show uh, if you see uh, he's everywhere um supporting manzukic or maybe Perisic is combining with uh, rakitic in the middle so there is uh, uh, the the entire team i feel is 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 run on the shoulders of how modric performs because Amazingly innovative. Uh, I mean, look at how he he finds himself in in very strange positions. You know, from nowhere you will suddenly see uh, Modric receiving the ball and then releasing the ball. And of course, um, uh, please don't forget Perisic. I mean, he is uh, last two last match. He was the key, He's scoring a goal and then creating a goal. I mean, that assist. So Perisic and Modric, if they are at their best, France is going to have a very tough time. You know, uh, Nilanjan, uh, Jyoti, I beg your pardon, this is probably what's going to happen, isn't it? I mean, Rebic is going to make those darting runs down this flank here, go down here, pass the ball, try and get it to Mandzukic or Perisic and hope that one of them scores like they did in the previous game. Do you believe that they're going to go with this strategy with Perisic trying to, you know, if, they, if he doesn't get Mandzukic, probably Perisic will reach the ball finally and score the goal like it happened against England? Um, I think it, that happened against England because England focused so much of their attention on stopping Rakitic and Modric that Rebic and Perisic had a lot of time to move down the wings and that was a mistake I feel England made in that game. I don't know how, how French, uh, the French are going to approach today's game, whether they're going to you know, try and cut down the midfield movement or they're going to cut down the wings. But because you know, we do know that Versaco also likes to get down a lot down that wing. It's going to be very interesting to see because 
their uh, right wing is going to go up against a uh, French left uh, wing which is slightly more defensive. So I feel Perisic has a huge role to play today because he's the one who's going to have space I feel and he's going to have Rakitic helping him this side. Strinic we know doesn't like making a lot of overlapping runs so he's got support behind him. Um, yeah, interesting. Modric I feel will be heavily marked today. But Modric, uh, Nilanjan, do you believe he's going to play a more defensive-minded role or is that going to be left up to only Brozovic and probably Rakitic and Modric are going to play just behind Mandzukic and hope that they can create some kind of an opening because Modric at the end of the day has got a wicked right foot. Absolutely, but uh, if you have go with a defensive Luka Modric mindset, you won't be able to beat France. You have to take the game to them to beat France and you know what have what they need to do is to stretch it to the flanks because France defend in numbers. Four and three, seven people are invariably there when they defend. And in that jungle of legs, it's very hard to get a one-two in between. That's one. So maybe that would be crossed. If you are able to stretch it to the flanks, the gaps may widen. Most importantly, which Croatia, what Croatia has not been able to do so far as yet, you need to increase men up front into the box. Maybe floated behind the defence line with someone to sneak in. But even in the match against England, when they were down by a goal, I remember two corners, which, which exact times I don't remember. It was 4v7 for Croatia, only four was a seven England defenders in the English box and another was again the 5v7. So unless you increase men up front, it's a, it would be a very, very hard task. Having said that, they would be having back at the, of their mind that this French team loves to counter attack and at the pace of Bape. Sure. So, would they be risking increasing men up front? Needs to be seen. You know, the technologically challenged anchor has a tab in his hand and he's trying really hard to try and get this thing to work. It's very difficult to get it work, but still, I've tried my best and brought the formation up to this. So. Uh, Perisic, Mandzukic and Rebic in the box is what you're suggesting as far as Croatia is concerned. More attacking. people, when they're attacking, yes, more people in the box. Probably Rosalko attacking from the other end just behind uh, Rebic. Modric and Rakitic moving freely just behind Mod Mandzukic and Perisic. And then, of course, the back four are always there to defend at the back. But that also leaves a gap on the left, uh, Nilanjan, for uh, France to press on the counter. Yeah, absolutely, because if Croatia play high line of defence, it's easier. But again, when you play high line of defence and if French are able to put it behind the high line of defence, with Bape's space, Srinic would be really tested out there. So whether they would be playing a high line of defence, as and when they attack, obviously the defence line also needs to move ahead. You know, let's try and look at both the teams and see how they'll form. This is the formation now, as far as both the teams are concerned. If you look at the head-to-head, head -head, uh, uh, Jyoti, you know, uh, Jiru versus Mandzukic, the two forwards, who, who do you think is going to win that battle? Uh, Mandzukic is a personal favourite. I, mean, I, 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 I rate him very highly. Um, I rate him higher than I would rate Jiru as a striker. And uh, Vijay, you know, let's look at the defensive, mid, uh, defensive midfielders now. Uh, of course, France will play with Pogba and Kante. And if you look at the attacking options as far as uh, Croatia are concerned, Modric, Rakitic, Perisic and Rebic against these two at the back, along with the defensive four, of course. Who do you believe is going to win that battle? Uh, Mandzukic, because he comes from nowhere. I mean, he is a guy who is always looking for those little angles. And his second goal, I think it was, to me, the goal. Because there was no, there was no goal there. A backhead from Perisic, he created, he slipped in past three defenders, right? And if all of the whole English defence stood helpless. They didn't re never realised that there is a man and, and the way he scored the goal as if he was playing in a practice game. I mean, he just kept his cool. But uh, uh, remember, uh, Croatia keeps its best for the second half. I mean, they would study France in the first half, definitely. And they're, they're both great managers. And Croatia will have to be watched in the second half, how they change their formation, how they, whatever tactical uh, innovations they bring in. But Mandzukic is my man, if, if, you, if it comes to 
excellence inside the box and here please don't forget griezmann we are not discussing griezmann indeed, at all indeed indeed griezmann of course uh, vijay says that griezmann is his man and he's expecting him to do wonderful things today this will be the attacking formation as far as croatia is concerned and this is something that we've been speaking about over the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so we'll try to bring it to you in the best way possible and uh, you know let's now go across to Akhilesh Suman, who's standing by at the French Embassy. Over to you, Akhilesh. Uh, yeah, Frank, you can see I'm at the French Embassy in Delhi and you can see the crowd behind. You can, can, you can just show the crowd behind. People are waiting, though half an hour are still left. So people are waiting here and you can see that people uh, have started cheering from the beginning. Yes. Allez les bleus! What? Allez les bleus. Okay. <laughs> Allez les bleus. Allez les bleus. And here, French ambassador is also here who was very busy that night when France won the semi final. And today, also, he is very hopeful. So, ambassador, how hopeful you are for this uh, win? Well, I'm very hopeful. Uh, of course, this is sport, so I'm also cautious. Um, well, you know, Croatia is a very, very good team, very experienced team. They have played extremely well. And at this level of the competition, you know, it's uh, also any weakness, uh, any mistake uh, can make the game. So, uh, but, but, but very hopeful. Yeah, I know, you are ambassador of France and you have to be very hopeful. But, uh, you know, your Croatian friend is also here in Delhi. Did you invite the Croatian ambassador here at your embassy? Well, yes, of course. In any case, we will celebrate sports tonight and uh, I hope he will uh, join us in a couple of minutes and uh, this is you know this is not a french celebration this is celebration of sports we have many many friends from the diplomatic community many indian friends joining us tonight and uh, hopefully also all our croatian friends ambassador why do you think that france will win this time because it is a long gap in 1998 you won and then it was a long gap for france to again come to this level so how why do you think that what is different this time well, it's been 20 years since 1998. Uh, it will be the third time in 20 years that we reach the final. We won once 20 years ago, and I think we're going to make it tonight. Why? Because I think the team, the French team, is a, is a very young, very dynamic, uh, very good team. Uh, they have played extremely well, and above all, they have demonstrated uh, very strong values of uh, team spirit. That night when I was asking you that uh, how much goals you are expecting, you told 2-0 and you got 1-0. Anyway, you won. So what many goals uh, you expecting today? Well, 1998 was 3-0. Uh, let's have this time 3-1. Oh, three to one. So uh, French ambassador is very, uh, you know, they're very kind, and he's giving at least uh, one ball to one goal to Croatian team. But uh, people are telling uh, ambassador that Croatian team is also very good. Many people are willing, like uh, that day, Bel Belgium we are also playing very well. So what do you think that how Croatian will play and how your team will uh, perform? Well, it's two very different teams. Uh, our team is very young, very dynamic. Uh, it's very it's representative of the, of the young generation of football. Croatian team is more experienced. They've been uh, playing together since a very long time, so they know each other very well. They have a rock solid defense, they have a very strong attack as well. And, and two teams are very, very good goalkeepers. So, <laughs> yeah. Ambassador, thank you so much that you have prepared so well for the. For, and I must be hoping that you must be preparing for a long time. But we are there and we will see that how you are winning it. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. And now you can see that how hopeful the ambassador is, and you can see the crowd here. And uh, you, people have started coming, and they will come uh, in good numbers. They are gathering here still, but you can see it till now that it, uh, here is a big screen. You can Sanjay, so you can. Uh, yeah, he is uh, on the other side, but people are sitting here. People are uh, will uh, start cheering after some time, but this is the time. Then uh, uh, almost half an hour left, and people will come. Uh, will keep coming here. So. Uh, it's like that. We will come to you again once the crowd starts coming more. All right, Akile Suman, thank you for joining us there from the French Embassy and taking us through what's happening. Clearly, the spirits are high as far as the French Embassy is concerned, the French Ambassador and everyone obviously supporting France and hoping that France wins. 3-1 is what the Ambassador said as far as the scoreline is concerned. Let's now, talking about the scoreline and talking about numbers, let's go across to our stats zone to Tina Ja, who's standing by there, who'll take us through the profiles of the main players for us. Welcome to the Stat Zone one final time. Let's take a look at the players in the two teams. 
Both teams have a strong defense and also players up ahead in equal measure. Let's first talk about the strikers from both teams. Let's start with the breakout teenager of this World Cup, Kylian Mbappe. The 19-year-old boy from Ban Louis, the poorer areas of Paris, has shown bright at this World Cup. Of the seven goals he has scored so far for his country, three have been at this World Cup. For the Croats, Ivan Perisic probably is one of the most important players in this squad. The experienced winger has found the net twice in this World Cup. In his international career, he has scored 20 goals. Since being nominated as one of three finalists for the Best FIFA Men's Player Award for 2016, Artwan Griezmann has remained consistently effective as proved by his goal and assist numbers with both Atletico Madrid and France this season. He has scored 23 international goals, three at this World Cup. On the other side, besides being a prolific goal scorer, Mario Mandzukic is also known for his defensive contribution and aerial power. He scored a goal in his team's 2-0 win over England in the semi-final. He will, of course, be looking to put one in tonight as well. Olivia Giroud is yet to score in Russia. The forward has played well in the midfield, creating chances for the men up ahead. Along with Pogba, he's created intense pressure on the opposition teams with his 1-2 play. Andrei Kramaric made his debut for Croatia under Niko Kovac in 2014 scoring or assisting in each of his first three games for the national team. But his most important goals in international football have come under new coach Zlatko Dalic. Of his 10 international goals, one has come at this World Cup. Let's now talk about the midfielders. French coach Didier Deschamps plan to use Paul Pogba has not been entirely fruitful this World Cup. The defensive midfielder has matured into one of world football's most recognisable talents recently. In the 59 matches that he has played for France, he has scored 9 goals. However, none have been at the World Cup. Coming now to Luka Modric, surely the man of the tournament. The French believe that Modric may not be in the same league as individual greats Messi or Hazard, but his whole work on the pitch is commendable and also very dangerous. The other crucial midfielder on the field for France will be Kante, who has become one of the finest players in the world in the four years since the 2014 World Cup. He is the team's workhorse, playing well as a defensive midfielder and is crucial to Deschamps' plans tonight. For the Croats, Marcelo Brozovic is their workhorse. The multi-talented midfielder reads plays superbly and is comfortable anywhere across the midfield line. So here's looking toward a scintillating match tonight. Over to you, Frank. All right, thank you, Tina, for taking us through the uh, key players as far as this match is concerned. Let me now go across to my panelists as well and find out what who they believe are some of the key players for today's match. Jyoti, key players today? Um, Mbappe, uh, Mandzukic, and Brozovic, and Kante. Brozovic and Kante, two defensive, defensive midfielders and two attackers is whom you pick. I believe, Nilanjan, that the goalkeepers should have a good day today and probably they are the ones to watch out for maybe. They will be having a busy day without any doubt. Uh, the match you never know can go up to extra times. Croatia has been dragging everything to the extra time. Um, great goalkeeping in this in this uh, in this World Cup by both the individuals. In fact, we have seen some great goalkeeping in this World Cup as yet. The reflexes of the goalkeepers, the maturity of the players, and what what a great goalkeeper is is not someone who just sh 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 means stops the shot, is a shot saver. Someone who also builds up the attack. The distribution is very important, which you have a look at uh, Subasic and Hugo Loris. You'll find out the distribution is brilliant, acting as the man just behind the defence. And they are goalkeepers who can avoid situations, interacting with the defensive back four. Rather than saving a situation, if you are able to avoid a situation being created, that speaks of a greater goalkeeper. Vijay Lokpalli, where do you think the match is going to be won or lost today? In the midfield, hmm. because that's where all the moves are going to be generated. And uh, yes, I mean, there is Perisic, an uh, all-round uh, player. But to me, Pogba and Modric, they are going to define what is going to happen on the field today. Do you believe that uh, Modric is going to be able to give the key balls that he has been able to do all throughout the tournament? Or is he going to be kept quiet? by Kante and Pogba both, you know, 
not giving him any space to move around. Yeah, but that's the challenge. I mean, if he takes away these two defenders with him, then there is space for the others to, to move up. So if that happens, then Croatia is already a step ahead. If, 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 if Modric is able to attract two or three players from the opponent, opposite side to hover around him, I think uh, he would have done a job. But uh, like I said, uh, it's a team which which does well in the second half, does well in the counter-attacks. And sometimes if you notice, maybe the manager would have had his plans, but there are players who are exceptionally good making instant uh, uh, changes, you know, changing their position. At this level, they know very well what to do. So to me, Modric is probably, if he plays the game of his life tonight, uh, Croatia will remember all times come. Let me now go across to our uh, studio audience and find out who they believe are the key players to watch out for today, of course. Let me walk across now to them and find out who the key players are. Okay, I'm not ready yet, but uh, okay, right now I'm going to go across to the studio audience and figure out who uh, they th believe are, is going to be key today. Uh, girls. The mic, please. <laughs> uh, I feel it's going to be Mbappe and Kante in the midfield for France. Okay. And for Croatia, I think Rakitic is mm. one of the key players. Uh, and yeah. Smithy? Um, I'd say Modric, definitely. Mm. Um, he's, if you look at the stats, he's scored the most goals, he's run the most, he's created the most chances among the Croatian players. So, yeah, he's the one to watch out for. The coaches now? Up. <laughs> Key players. Ask key key players. Who are Both are both are goalkeeper. Then, who available tournament में already जब आपने देखा होगा कि एक बार Argentina में Maradona खेल रहा था तो last में two two draw हुआ होने के बाद जो है last में Maradona एक goal हुआ था तो Maradona से ये पूछा गया कि आपको कैसे लगता है कैसे बोला टोटल टीम में सभी माराडोना थे तो जो टीम विनिंग करेगी तो ऑलरेडी उसमें टोटल सारे की प्लेयर हैं तभी तो जीतेगी वो एक प्लेयर जो है आप की प्लेयर है की प्लेयर वो एक प्लेयर जो कुछ नहीं जानता उसके पास 90 मिनट उसको नहीं खेलने देगा वो तो टोटल जो है हमारा ये है कि जो आज टीम विनिंग करेगी चाहे क्रोएशिया हो चाहे फ्रांस हो लेकिन उसमें टोटल जो है वो की प्लेयर है अच्छा सारे प्लेयर्स जो हैं की प्लेयर्स हैं जो इसलिए फाइनल्स इसलिए फाइनल्स तक पहुंचे हैं और इस इस तक पर पहुंचे हैं मैम who do you think is I think the goalkeepers okay goalkeepers Definitely. there's there's another coach behind you the let's find let's ball. find out from him uh, goalkeeper goalkeeper and what do the boys think goalkeeper forward uh, midfielders कौन who who is key कौन कौन अच्छा खेलेगा आज midfielder midfielder सारे midfielders अच्छे खेलेंगे अच्छा फॉरवर्ड्स क्या करेंगे फॉरवर्ड्स आर आल्सो बेस्ट प्लेयर्स एंड आई थिंक फॉरवर्ड्स वुड डू बेस्ट ओके द फॉरवर्ड्स विल डू वेल इज व्हाट सम आर सजेस्टिंग सम आर सजेस्टिंग ऑफ कोर्स द मिडफील्डर्स विल डू वेल लेट्स गो अक्रॉस टू टीना जा हुज मूव्ड अवे फ्रॉम द स्टैट जोन एंड गॉन टू द चिल्ड्रन देयर एंड लेट्स सी व्हाट दे हैव टू से अबाउट दिस मैच ओवर टू यू टीना Thank you, Frank. So, in a few minutes from now, the most important match of the FIFA World Cup 2018 is set to begin. Sylvester, coming to you, you know, very few would have expected this final, France versus Croatia. Who do you think is going to take a, take home the? Yeah, this tournament is very, very special. Actually, the knockout started from the word go when the tournament started. That's you know, it's never happened. Like second round, third round, it's this is the first World Cup where I've seen from the day one. It was a knock knockout situation. But who do you think is going to take the trophy home, Croatia, France? Uh, like for example, for uh, yeah, for, uh, in that case, uh, because uh, uh, I have a huge respect for Zidane, France is there. But again, Croatia. So I think I'll I'll put it this way, in a more diplomatic way, the best team wins. Okay. Who do you think is going to take it? France. France. And what about you? Uh, it would be Croatia. आपको क्या लगता है? कौन जीतेगा? Croatia. मुझे लगती है फ्रांस। आप क्या सोचते हैं? You've been following the match since the beginning. Yeah. So most probably it will be the 
battle between the midfields. So as uh, we have very much experienced midfield here, Croatians have the Ivan Rakitic and Luka Modric, who is a contender of Ballon d'Or, mm. as well as the Golden Ball. So uh, along uh, and the opposite side, France has this Paul Pogba and uh, Kante has been phenomenal this season. So I hope this game goes to extra time as well as penalty and let the goalkeepers decide. And it. let Croatia win the game. Yeah, and absolutely. Croatia <laughs> decide. What do you Croatia will win. Croatia will win. So lots of people going in for Croatia and for fans who are supporting Croatia, including me. Let's hope and keep in mind, be elated with the fact that, you know, in 2010, Spain, the first time in finals, took away the trophy home. And of course, in 1998, France defeated Croatia first in the semi-final and then went on to win the World Cup. So let's hope May the best team win. Over to you, Frank. Indeed, Tina. May the best team win. And I like that final comment there from that gentleman talking about how the game should go into extra time and then penalties maybe because that's what we too are expecting and we want to see some great football tonight and may the best team win at the end of the evening. Let's go across now to our centres and see what's happening there. First, let's go across to Kolkata where Sandeep Yash is standing by. Sandeep Yash, over to you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, right now, I'm at the Kolkata Press Club. As you can see, the hall gradually filling up behind me. Uh, Kolkata has a French connection uh, through Chandarnagar, which was one of the uh, colony a few centuries back. But right now, Kolkatans feel that Croatia is a small nation with a big heart. So my question to Subranshu Roy is that Subranshu tell us that how come a small nation who has great crash through uh, to the uh, world's biggest stage of sport. What is the import? Uh, actually, you see, uh, Croatia, whether they uh, are uh, going to win this tournament or not, they are already in the history. And uh, the lesson that we can learn from them, that with this kind of small countries with less infrastructure, they have emerged in the uh, highest stage, in the highest uh, sporting carnival. And definitely, it's very inspiring for us the country uh, uh, like India who is playing football for more than uh, 100 years, they can uh, follow the model of Croatia, their infrastructure and so on, that it, it could be, one day it could be there in that fray. Thank you. Uh, Kuntala, the question for you is that in this World Cup, there have been lots of dead situation goals. Can you please explain this phrase to our audience? Uh, in this World Cup, most of the goals scored by uh, uh, free kick, penalty kick, uh, because uh, now time and space become very less, and all the teams uh, is defending. Uh, all the teams are coming back from uh, from uh, back defending third, and for that there is no time and space and no penetration for for scoring. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Back to the studio. All right. Thank you, Sandeep Yash, for taking us through what's happening there in Kolkata. Meanwhile, let's go across to Kochi now uh, to South India and find out what's happening there. My colleague uh, Panchanan Mishra is standing by. Different location this time around looks like. Yes, Frank, thanks very much. And uh, uh, apart from data uh, and, and analysis, uh, we can show you that some uh, very interesting pictures from here, uh, the ground, uh, the, the mecca of uh, football, uh, this uh, Pochi. And uh, uh, you can see behind me that uh, there are full preparations are going on for the uh, uh, this uh, FIFA final match. And uh, the many chairs are placed there, big screen is placed there, and uh, uh, they, are, they are eagerly waiting for the finals uh, around 8.30. And the two teams, uh, France and Croatia, the, they are, uh, the, the most of the uh, fans here are supporting uh, Croatia. Just we can, a uh, very interesting person be, be here with us. Uh, uh, what is your name? Go Godfrey De Silva. What is this, uh, your, your costume? This is, uh, I think, uh, I am mad with football. So I think uh, I am inside the football. So I make a football and I get inside the football, that's all. Which team you are supporting here is looking like Croatia? Croatia. What you did there, the last in world, last World Cup, what you did there regarding this the football this time? The, uh, this year. Last World Cup, uh, what was your costume? Uh, last World Cup, we made a big football and we, I think it's a rolling football that time uh, because uh, now I can't make that 
His two sons are all, all, uh, also here and they are uh, also crazy about football. What is your name? Anani Godge. Which team you are supporting? Cro Which team you are supporting? Croatia. Croatia. Like father, the sons are also supporting Croatia and uh, we can take a very quick, quick comment from other. Uh, what are your uh, expectations today? Which team you are uh, expecting going to win? In Croatia. Croatia. So uh, like Frank, uh, earlier also uh, we have talked to so much, uh, so many uh, uh, football fans. And the Croatia is looking like favorite one, but we have to see that uh, uh, can England uh, repeat its 1998 or uh, we have to, we, we can see a new winner in FIFA. Us through what's happening in Kochi and thank you for showing us that man there in that splendid costume, adding some colour uh, to, to our coverage of the FIFA World Cup as well. Jay Lokpalli, have you seen, this? I mean you've covered several World Cups. Uh, in your life, what's the craziest thing you've seen? No, I've watched a lot of World Cups, but um, uh, <clears throat> this is something very, very, very innovative. <laughs> no, you can't, you don't know whether it's a football or a man speaking, so um, uh, it, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. Uh, Nilanjan, would you dare do something like that? Maybe, maybe a fancy haircut, if not that. <laughs> I don't have much hair, so how do I go do a fancy haircut? What's the craziest thing that you've done? Don't Supporting remember. Supporting a team. Don't ah. remember. I have my own superstitions. Uh, uh, nothing uh, more a great feeling than uh, when the underdogs win whom you are supporting. Uh, crazy things, not really. Maybe don't remember. Or maybe <laughs> we speak off screen. <laughs> the Lanjan there does not want to reveal anything, keeping his cards very close to his chest at the moment. Let's go across to Goa for the time being and see what's happening there where uh, Rajat Kane is standing by. Over to you, Rajat. Hi, Frank. The scene is set here in Goa. Well, there'll be a party, I'm sure, in Moscow to Paris to Zagreb. But Panjim, or to say it on a polarized, not far behind. I'm at Bay 15 and the setting here is just perfect. Big screen and a lot of football props and interesting food menu here as well. Now, before me is this food menu. We have messy cheese balls, we have uh, Oliver in tomato buffon types that possibly Olivia Khan, the great German goalkeeper. Chetri baked bread, the Indian flavor as well. Friddle, chost, meatballs. Now, I mean, Goans love their food, they love their football. So this is just a part of, the, for that matter, just a taste of, of football plus food in Goa. Crowd has begun to trickle in here at the Bay 15 and they are expecting nearly 500 odd people to say the least. Uh, we seem to have lost the signal there with uh, Rajat Kane. Uh, seems to be enjoying himself uh, at uh, the place that he's at in Dona Paula. Of course, the food is something that he's been speaking about over the last uh, hour and a half or so. Uh, Jyoti, mm, we're talking about crazy. Did the World Cup lack a bit of crazy this time around? Yeah, um, no strange haircuts and you no, know, you know, brightly coloured boots this time. I thought, I, you know, usually there, there's always a new trend that comes out of a World Cup, a new hairstyle, a new style that sort of develops. But I thought this time it was sober. I mean, I liked it. I like sober things, but I liked, uh, you know, I like white boots and black boots. But you know, no major like things stand out in terms even of the celebrations have been very yeah, subdued. even I very mean. very sober celebrations. Nothing over the top. Maybe the the Nigerians did their little, hmm. and of course the um, the somersault throw in, which which stood out for me. But apart from that, nothing nothing major. What's the craziest thing you've done? I'm not a crazy. I'm not a. I'm not a very colourful person. But um, sported a mohawk, maybe. <laughs> uh, no, I've probably had the same hairstyle for the past ten years. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, do we have Akhilesh Suman at the moment, uh, standing by at the French Embassy? Ak Akhilesh Suman, if you're with me, uh, what's happening there at the French Embassy? Uh, now after a little correction, to the World Cup final. Yeah, now I will show you again the crowd has well, like anything, you know, that's so much of crowd here and um, inside the French embassy. Though there is a humid uh, atmosphere, the temperature is also not very good as far as the French are used to. But you know that uh, people are gathered here. And if I can ask, if I can ask some people, you know, 
You know, uh, you are you are from the French embassy or you are a French citizen? What? You are French citizen or you are from French embassy? Not from French embassy, I'm from France, that's all. It's enough. <laughs> so how do you think this time your uh, team is going to win? We're going to win, of course. Of course we're going to win. <laughs> how many goals you are giving to France? Uh, this I don't know. It would be great that it was... It will be 3-0 again. 3-0. And uh, what? how many goals had you given before you won in the last match? Uh, one. <laughs> oh, you gave one. Yeah. You, gave one. you also wished for one? Hmm? You predicted one goal last? Last time I didn't predict it. Any. Oh, you didn't pick it. I didn't believe that much in the team, but right now I believe it. <laughs> what is the strength of France this time? You know that uh, France is going to play for the final after 10 years. How, what is the situation of France now? In France, it's crazy. Everybody are really into it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So? Yeah. yeah. I, I, you can also that. <laughs> How do you think that French are strong this time? And what? Can you get up? Can you get up? Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, I think we're gonna win maybe 4-0. 4-0. So so you can you can see that every uh, yeah yeah uh, everyone is hoping. <laughs> yes, but do you think so? No. Four, four, you had one zero last time, and you were expecting four zero this time. Because we are the best. Huh? Yes, definitely we are the best. Did you see the the last uh, match or the game? We are super strong. So you are not giving Croatia any goal. Oh, you cannot be so cruel. No, zero. Oh, so you can see Fra that people are giving 3-0, 4-0. So French are so confident this time that even though they are at this stage, they are very cheering, they are very hopeful, and they are not from the embassy of France. They are French citizens here in Delhi, and they are hoping so. French. Thank you, Akhle Suman, for bringing us the mood from the French embassy. The French certainly seem confident, but... Could they be a little overconfident, Vijay Lokpalli? And could that create some problems for the French side? Probably fans are more uh, inclined to become more confident and, and probably they're not reading the game very tactically. And I'm sure no French player or Croatian player will enter the field with overconfidence. You have to be cautious because one little slip, you can't come back if you concede an early goal. But uh, Croatia is different. I mean, last match, uh, they conceded an early goal and came back so strongly. And uh, Frank, if you remember, you talked about celebration. Uh, I'll never forget the, the, the Croatian celebration, which almost crushed that photographer. And, he, <laughs> and even in the difficult situation, he was doing his job. He got some great sh uh, uh, shots. Uh, shots. So uh, maybe Croatians will, will remember to, to enact another uh, uh, such celebration if, if they want to win the final uh, but uh, talking of confidence yes they will be confident no doubt because there would have been so much of dressing room uh, talk uh, tactical talk and uh, but we will know only believe me only in the second half which way the game is going uh, even if even is, if is it going to be a high scoring game or do you believe it's going to be a tactical game it will be a very tactical game a very very tactical game and uh, it is quite possible you end up conceding a goal and then in, in, in trying to find the equalizer you end up vacant spots in your defense and concede another goal and then you try to come back like it happened uh, where japan uh, they led by two goals and then ended up on the on, on the losing side so it will be a very, very tactical game, uh, which I don't know, a normal viewer, how much of it will he be able to follow. But I would love a game where a lot of goals are scored. Okay, we all want goals at the end of the day. Football is watched for the goals by the uh, general public, of course. Uh, Jyoti, talking about confidence, Croatia also should go into this match very confident because they have played almost one whole match extra as compared to France. And they have come out on top. Uh, you know, in each one of those games, even though they have played extra football. Yeah, every win, you know, adds to your confidence as a team. Uh, and every minute spent on the field together adds to your combination as a team and your the time experience together as a team. You get to know each other better, you know, as a team. So I'm sure they take that with them heading into today's game. Um, coming off, you know, three wins from after extra time, 
it gives you a different high. Uh, winning, you know, a game at that stage, it does give you an extra high, and I'm sure Croatia is riding high on that high. But France uh, will not be. I wouldn't say they they would be overconfident, but they will be confident in in the way they've played through this tournament. Um, two teams that play very different football. One team, you know, quick, direct play. One team likes to hold the ball. So it's going to be a very interesting match to watch um, because we're going to see two very different styles of football going up against each other. Um, but and really, as I ca I cannot pick uh, between the two sides, um, to be honest, because it's going to all come down to what happens on the day to day in those 90 minutes. Indeed, it's going to come down to the 90 minutes that will be played in the next 35 minutes. Of course, uh, this kickoff is just 35 minutes away from now. Nilanjan, um, as far as the Croatian side is concerned, you know they've fought really hard. They've played extra football as compared to France, but they are also the only team that has won all their matches through the course of the tournament. So that too is probably somewhere in their minds. As a fan of Croatian football, let the trend continue. Uh, can Will fatigue be the factor when you raise that? It can be. Croatia cannot afford to concede first. If you do win a World Cup final, especially against this French side, they will shut shop. And once you are out of your shells going out to counter-attack, as Vijay sir very, very rightly pointed out, there would be gaps in your defence because this is the World Cup final where they can exploit. Croatia have looked a bit susceptible against set-pieces, has been visible quite many times. The defence has switched off quite a few times. Those areas, you need to be totally switched on. Indeed. OK. Uh, time now for final comments from my panellists, of course, and score lines as well. Uh, I want Croatia to win, so I'll put it this way. If France wins, I'll accept it very gracefully. But if Croatia wins, I'll give you all a treat. Oh, wow, we're going to take you up <laughs> to that. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, uh, Jyoti? Predictions? Yeah, predictions um, and final thoughts. I think this game is going to go into extra time. I think it's going to end 1-1 one, one, and it's going to go into extra time and be won in extra time. Uh, by. Oh, whichever side I pick doesn't win, so um, France. Okay, France and <laughs> London. Very hard to predict. Uh, sit back, relax, enjoy the World Cup final. The treat is due, it's coming. Okay, the treat is due. We can due. order the food from your tab, maybe? <laughs> yeah, for my tab. The technologically challenged anchor is going to use his tab and order some food for all of us, and uh, Mr. Vijay Lokpalli is going to pay for it. <laughs> all right, uh, thank you to our wonderful audience as well for joining us. A quick comment from the audience. Come on, you've got to scream it out. France or Croatia? Croatia. Who do you give that to? I'll ask the senior most person here. Vijay Lokpalli. Croatia. Okay. <laughs> Croatia. <laughs> Croatia. Okay, Croatia it is. Vijay Lokpalli, pleasure and an honor to Thank share you. the same screen, screen space with you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here. Nilanjan and Jyoti, what can I say? It's been a roller coaster ride, a thriller ride. Thank you to the both of you. I've made two lovely friends through the course of the World Cup Same. and I hope to take that friendship through uh, forward as well. Jyoti, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Nilanjan, thank, thank you, you so, so much. Thank you so much. Enjoyed every bit of it. Thank you. Well, we enjoyed bringing the World Cup to you over the course of 31 days and we hope you liked our coverage too. Thank you for your support. Thank you for tuning in every day and watching our coverage as well. That's it from me. See you again next time. Enjoy the World Cup final.